I just want to talk about our GFX 350 light offer that we're running at the moment. So this is um, a very good saving on a, an entry level GPS. So I suppose before always the easy guy 250 was the entry level GPS we would have fitted. There's still hundreds of them out there across the country in tractors. So the easy guy 250 was a four and a half inch display. The GFX 350 is now a seven inch display and it's touch screen. And um, it's a big step up from an easy guy 250. So I suppose in the GFX 350 light, um, you'll have the display come in the box. And in the box, when you open it up, you'll have your ram mount for, for mounting. So you'll have a ball that screws onto the back. You'll have your ram mount extension in the middle, and then you'll have the ball on the other side, which comes with two U-bolts, which can be clamped onto a pipe or bolted on the tractor cab. Um, after that, we have the display come in a separate box. So in the box here we have the display and we open that up and that comes with the GFX 350 display. So we take that apart um, and take it out of the bag. The RAM mount will actually screw onto the back of the display here and then we have the clamp the other side. We also have the option of bringing it with a su suction cup as well. So we have the suction cup here that comes with a ram mount also and um, the ball back onto the display. So if we're using the suction cup, just clamp it on to window or the windscreen of the tractor if you want to keep it in front of the steering wheel or something like that. So um, back to the display itself, it's a seven inch display. So it's still the same size as the 250, but the screen itself is from corner to corner seven inches where it was four and a half inches with the easy guy 250 and everything is touch screen on the screen. Um, to power it up then, once you've got it mounted in the cab, either with your suction cup or clamped on in the cab, uh, you need to power it up. So you've got a six pin Deutsch connector here, and that's where you'll power it up. So we've got three options of power cables. The probably most popular way we're selling this at the moment is with the, the three pin D plug. So the three pin D plug to plug into the tractor, and then the six pin Deutsch the other side. And then what we're doing is we're plugging that into the back of the screen and we're plugging this into our three pin um, power plug in the tractor to power it up. We do as well have the option of, if someone's rather use the cigarette lighter, um, we've got the option of plugging in here and plugging into the cigarette lighter on the tractor. Um, this probably isn't as popular, look, cigarette lighters and tractors aren't always working or they're loose connection, things like that, and it hops out when you're working. So the three pin plug is, is probably um, uh, more popular. Um, the other power option we have as well is the cables as well that can come in the box. Um, two power cables, uh, two bolt on ice, so your positive and your negative, you can bolt them onto the battery or bolt them onto a power source on the starter or somewhere, bring them up into the cab. Um, this one will plug into this one and if you go back into your display, so that's the other option. That is, look, definitely more of a hardware. There's less chance of it plugging out while you're working. Um, it's definitely a more secure power source. You'll get away for just manual guidance to the basic system with either of them power plugs, but if you're using implement control or you're going to use auto steer, um, you're probably better off with the more fixed power source. So that's what comes in the box. Um, the next thing we need to do then is add an antenna to the display to pick up a signal. So with the 350 light, um, it comes with the NAV 500 antenna, which is in a separate box. So um, the NAV 500 is a white dome, I suppose, before we had the AG-15, then we had the AG-25, but it was replaced by the NAV 500 antenna. Um, NAV 500 antenna in the box, again, comes nice and protected in the box there. And um, so it's got two connectors at the back. One connector will go from, you'll, your antenna cable will plug in here to this little round connector and it'll come back into the display into the, the same connector on the other side. So you'll run a cable from this guy to this guy and that'll allow you to pick up a satellite through the antenna into the display. Um, the other port here on the back of the display is actually uh, if you want to run a camera or if you're running a connection through for something like um, implement control with a fertilizer spreader and USB stick for doing any data transfer from the display back to the computer or a software update even. Um, so with the NAV 500 antenna in, in the box you've also got the antenna cable. It's 
so that's the antenna cable. It's got marked display on one side and it's got the NAV500 on the other side so you know which side plugs in where. The, um, the reason why it's important to keep the NAV500 side on the roof is because it's got a little cap there that you can screw back on after you've got the NAV500 removed. If you've ever taken off the NAV500 to stop any moisture or anything getting into that side in the connector. Um, so that's your NAV500 with the antenna cable. It comes with little instructions in the box there, so it actually says which, which way to run the cables. Um, so it's all there, what, what port is which on the display, what port is which on the antenna and what way to run them. Um, so the basic fitting is there. It comes with a little plate. The plate has three double-sided sticky pads. So if you've got a plastic or fiberglass roof on the tractor, peel back your, your, um, your double-sided tape, stick it on the roof. Usually we'd mount it center of the axle on the back and um, stick the plate down. It's got a little tab here, which the NAV500 sits into. Um, with that little tab, the tab will sit into here so it stops the, stops the NAV500 from turning left to right when it's on the roof. Um, so it's got a magnet then, three magnets on the NAV500 onto the plate um, to keep it nice and secure. So if you want to swap the NAV900 or NAV500 between two tractors or anything like that, you can just um, purchase a second plate and put a plate on each tractor and swap the NAV500 between two. You can purchase a second antenna cable and you can even purchase a second power cable. So you can use the same display and the same antenna between two tractors or more by just using extra cables. Um, so then I suppose when we power, power up the GFX 350 light, um, your display is something like this. You have, um, it, it's worked with sort of like a tablet. You can go into your Precision IQ app and this will be your screen. Your GNSS is your signal. So we can run uncorrected, which is sort of sub-meter accuracy when it's connected to the antenna, but usually we'd come down to SBAS, which is sort of eight inches um, pass-to-pass accuracy, uh, more than good enough for manual guidance. The software version is, is here under the system. Um, our vehicle profile, so we can create that from the list. When you're setting up your tractor, if you've got more than one tractor, you can set up more than one tractor on the list. You can create your, your new tractor. We've got a list of tractors already pre-built in. So we would click on your tractor. We can click on the, the makeup tractor that we want to, uh, that we're using, um, the series of the tractor. Um, so we can, we can click on, on the series of the tractor as well. The model of the tractor, and then it's going to be a base model, manual guidance, the NAV500 antenna is already in here. The measurements are pre-built in now because we know the tractor is already there, but we can edit them if we need to. We can just check all these measurements with a measuring tape to compare if we need to. Um, and likewise, the measurements are, are here as well already. Um, so what we'll do then is um, save our vehicle. Once we've got our vehicle created, we can then select it from the list Likewise, our implement, we can create our fertilizer spreader or sprayer. Um, we can create a new implement, the same as what we did. If we're using application control, we can select application control from the list. Um, we can click what type of work we're doing, spreading, what sort of a spreader it is. We can put a name in on the spreader. Um, we can put in our hitch measurements. Um, We'll have to fix mount it if it's on the link arms or drawbar if it's if it's trailed. And then on the application width and swat width, so that would be the width we're spreading our fertilizer at. If we're spreading at 18 meters, um, we keep them both at 18 meters. If we want an overlap, we can we can we can put a slight difference in them. Um, and then the physical width is just the physical width of the spreader. Physical length of the spreader application control we've got it turned off you could turn it on if you want to use it virtually so that it doesn't count the area you've already spread um, and we press the green tick so that's our implement set up tractor set up we can create our fields so we can have a full list of all our fields on the farm here create a new field we can put in the field name we can put in the field name we can put in the client's name so if we're working for um, a, a, a particular farmer we can put in the farmer's name that we're working for um, and and the farm we're working on for them so that'll keep all our records together so we've got our field created and our task is spreading 
um, when we want when we've got everything set up everything is green we can come into our field and now we've got our fertilizer spread up set up on our tractor um, as we start driving we can highlight the paint to see where we spread it's working off the width of the spreader that we've selected when we stop spreading we turn it off if we want to create an AB line we can use our line here we can do an AB line we set our A we drive for 10 meters then it'll allow us to set our B point and we save it that now gives us our straight lines to follow we've got our guidance indicators up here whether we need to go left or right um, that's all here so we can follow it you can see if we can go to the left of, if we go to the left of the line it tells us we're going off the line if we come back right on the line it's navigating us back onto the line when we're back on the line then we can start painting again so we're trying to follow that line down the field we can turn back up on ourselves and we'll follow the next line back up the field again so that's what it's allowing us to do field manager allows us to see the total field area we can see our, our lines that we have created in the field we can see our boundary of the field if we want to mark any landmarks or points in the field or take out any exclusion zones we can do that in here and a task history so i can see we're spreading here today and today's date and today's time and we can see a map so we'll have the record with each field we've got a diagnostics menu and the ut function um, this display can be unlocked for isobus so if this display was to be unlocked for isobus um, you would have the iso ut function as well so this is something that not a, and I'd say most of the entry level GPS systems won't have the ISOBUS functionality where our display does. So that's a, a big um, advantage of this display over some of the cheaper um, brands out there is that this display has ISOBUS uh, capability, it has auto steer capability, it has um, rate and section control capability, we can run a camera through it, it's um, 16 gigabytes of memory and um, it's got quite a fast processor it's got a good ip rating for dust and and um, uh, water and dampness things like that so you can use it on a quad bike or a gate or something like that as well and it's a uh, very simple install it'll do all the basic functions but you're well future proofed in what you can do with it going forward because of um, all the features we can unlock on the display down the road if you ever want to so it's a well future proofed um, system that at an entry level price to start with and um, it's a good offer that we have running at the moment